The plenary session in Parliament today was notably calmer than in other sessions. However, when leaders touched on the issue of integration, a firestorm erupted. The Independent Qualification Commission confirmed the Chair of the Administrative Court of First Instance, Ariel Roshi, to duty. The State Police entered inside the Faculty of Philology today, which led to some clashes between students and police. Good evening, it's 6 o'clock on Thursday, the 7th of February, 2019. Welcome to the English edition of Aura News. My name is Oliver, and I'm here to bring you the day's top stories from across the country translated into English. Today we begin with a much quieter situation unfolding in today's plenary session. Softer tones emerged in the absence of the Prime Minister, Eddie Rama, while Luzin Basha continued his call on Albanians and socialists in particular to join the protest on the 16th of February and remove the government which he calls a criminal gang, stating, Today is the penultimate case to appeal to the conscience of honest socialists to force the removal of the puppets of crime and the oligarchy who has filled this hall. Let's appeal to the voice of reason and pave the way for a political situation before the people themselves decide to cleanse this hall and its institutions from crime and the oligarchy. There will be no opening negotiations in June, and the only responsibility we have is to expose the man sitting in that chair, Eddie Rama, as an elected fraud, not by Albanians' votes, but with crime. Meanwhile, Basha added that they have to solve the situation. He assured them that by February 16th, citizens will take their fate to the streets by starting the cleansing of crime from the assembly. In response to the opposition leader, the interior minister recalled the victims of January 21st, saying that there is no comparison between these two. Ironically stating, Mr. Basha, First, I thank you for giving me the opportunity through your index finger to speak and answer you. You will never cause the Ministry of Interior, which I lead, to have victims in the main boulevard of Tirana. You will never be able to remove the black blotch you left personally in the post of Minister of Interior. So whenever you point your finger at me, just think about the history you leave behind, concluded Leshai. Meanwhile, in Kosovo, the parliament discussed negotiations with the European Union, grabbing the attention of former Prime Minister Berisha. There, he expressed himself categorically against the division of territory, stating, The division of territory opens up Pandora's box. It brings about an automatic blocking of the integration process. And meanwhile, Rama is becoming a Balkan contingent, and the bills are being paid by Albanians. Kosovo and Serbia should solve their own problems as two independent states, as two states that see a European future and not on the basis of who has the rights to their homeland. The response was taken by the chair of the Socialist Parliamentary Group, Talon Bala, who underlines that Albania is in line with America and the European Union regarding Kosovo. While for integration, he says the country has done its homework and calls upon losing Basha to place his vote on electoral reform. Our next story comes after the arrest of four former officers in the Ministry of Justice arrested on charges relating to the abuse of tenders. SMI Chair Monica Kruemadi today accusing Justice Minister Eltilda Jonai of blackmailing judges and prosecutors to interfere in the ongoing investigations. Based on this, Kuremadi says Jonai has corruption on the insides of her home. Kuremadi joined Basha in his call upon socialists to take back the fate of their party, which according to the opposition leaders has been overrun by crime and gangs. The response was received by Deputy Prime Minister Arion Brace, who after counting some of the socialists who were violated over the years in defense of their vote, asked to remain silent. New developments out of the Independent Qualification Commission. The chair of the first instance administrative court in Tirana, Ariel Roshi, has been confirmed to duty. Vetting against Judge Roshi was performed on three criteria, that of property, image, and professional skill set. According to the Independent Qualification Commission, based on the information forwarded by the ILDKPKI, the judge has made an accurate declaration of his assets, has proven to have sufficient financial resources, and has no assets in hiding or a history of issuing false statements. According to the commission, Roshi owns a 110-square-meter apartment worth about 8 million lek, 
purchased with loans taken out of the bank. In 2006, the commission requested verification from the tax department for the construction of an apartment he commissioned with the income from his parents. Commissioner Valbona Sanjaktari said that from the investigations conducted by the Independent Qualification Commission, Mr. Roshi has made declarations of property in accordance with the law, no hiding of property or false statements. As for the professional skills criterion, Roshi received a positive assessment. The trial panel at the helm of the commission consisted of Ghent Tafa Bungo, Luzim Hamitai, and Valbona Sanjaktari. And now on to the new policy taking effect next week. Vetting in police stations will start in the second week of February, while the Security Academy and the guard premises are selected as the potential buildings to be used for the vetting process. Interior Ministry Representative Aida Shehi reported to the National Security Commission on the progress of the vetting process, declaring that the process is currently ready with the External Evaluation Committee already being set up and that the cause of delay is due to the approval by the Council of Ministers decision to allocate funds of 420 million lek. According to the vetting law, dismissed police officers can return back to their blue uniforms if they pass the verification process. However, this is in contradiction with the police law itself, where every ex-executive who has two years removed from duty will be penalized. For this legal gap, members of the Security Commission must be able to clarify this discrepancy. We will take on the measures for this to be accomplished by the External Evaluation Committee. Then the External Commission will have its own set of procedures for those with high evaluations, and then the respective committees will be set up to evaluate all self-declaration forms. I believe it will be realized, said Aida Shehi. Meanwhile, in the National Security Commission, only representatives of the majority were present and asked to be informed on the reasons why the vetting of police has been postponed. The first 296 senior police officers will be submitted before the External Evaluation Committee, starting with the General Director and then the Directors of the respective Districts and Commissariats. Turning now to the Faculty of Philology, new reports on the mistreatment by police officers during an intervention today on university premises. Professor Mark Marku denouncing the intervention by state police and accusing Minister Sander Leshai of using the police to threaten instructors and students. Marku stated that police forces came with threats while he says he captured it all on film and plans on dealing with the case in court and at the People's Advocate. He said that the police were hiding behind walls so they would not reveal their faces in the video, stating, Is this the image of a police force under Sander Leshai? When asked if he has any calls for the government, Marku replied, I have no calls for anyone to hear at all. The Prime Minister is now in Saudi Arabia. Minister Leshai made a statement yesterday that he denies today. Both are completely bereft of morality. I do not know where their morality has gone. Marku concluded his statements by saying, I have no calls for anyone. The only appeal that I have for them is not to be so treacherous because we are not afraid. Finally tonight, good news now coming out of the Bank of Albania, the governor of the bank declaring positive expectations for the Albanian economy. Gen Saiko appealing to continue reforms that ensure a sustainable economic growth, but the head of the central bank explaining that as a result of cleaning the bank's balance sheets, a decline in lendings is expected. Seiko stating, the Supervisory Council finds it appropriate to repeat its call for the continuation of structural reforms as the best instrument in promoting the country's sustainable and long-term growth. The new economic and monetary information taken into account suggests that Albania's economy continues to follow a positive trend in development. Aggregate demand continues to grow in the second half of last year, boosting output growth, expanding the country's employment, and improving the main economic and financial balances of the country. Seiko concluded by stating, the ratio of non-performing loans declined to 11.1% at the end of 2018, illustrating the steady trend of progress made in this regard. In response, credit to the private sector has shown signs of revival, although the reported declining stock continues to reflect the effect of cleaning the balances on the exchange rate and non-performing loans. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening, and be sure to join me again every Monday to Saturday at 6 p.m. for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of War News, thank you and have a good night.